الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين أما بعد And just to take a few minutes of your time this evening after we have play, prayed this Salat al-Taraweeh and we will continue inshallah from that which we mentioned yesterday from the words of the scholars of the Salaf of this Ummah from the early generations and from the scholars of later times regarding the manhaj as salafi or the Salafi methodology. We mentioned yesterday the statement of Imam Al-Awza'i rahimahullah ta'ala as has been collected by Imam Al-Ajuri in a sharia that he mentioned Al-Awza'i rahimahullah died in the year 157 after the hijra alayka bi athari bi atharin min salaf upon you are the narrations of the salaf wa in rafadak nas even if the people were to abandon you and beware of the opinions of men even if they beautify their speech or even if that opinion is beautified by speech so today i'll mention to you a narration also collected Naam in the Madkhal ila Sunan al Kubra of Al Bayhaqi. Where Abu Asim and Nabil, Naam and Nabil, that he stated that I heard Sufyan al Thawri, or I was listening to Sufyan al Thawri, and Sufyan al Thawri, of course, is from the great Imams of the Salaf, died in the year 161 after the Hijra. He's from the great scholars of the past. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah said about him that he was the Imam of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a of his era. So anyway, Abu Asim rahimahullah, he said that I heard Sufyan al thawri I was listening to Sufyan al thawri and a youth from the people of knowledge, meaning a young man from the people of knowledge came and sat in his gathering. And this young man who had some knowledge with him he put himself forward in that gathering in front of the scholars. وَيَتَكَلَّمْ وَيَتَكَبَّرْ He spoke and he made apparent his pride. He spoke, with he spoke and made and, 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 and spoke with knowledge, with his knowledge, with the knowledge that he possessed in front of those who were older than him. So Abu Asim said, فَغَدَبَ Sufyan." So Sufyan al-Thawri became angry. And he said, that our salaf were not like this, like you. They were not like you. Rather, one of them would not take the role of being in front of the people. And he would not sit in the forefront up until he had been seeking this knowledge for 30 years. And you are the one who raises himself, makes himself big and important amongst those who are older than you. Get up from me. And I don't want to see you in my gathering again. So here the point being, that Sufyan al-Thawri, I mean there's obviously huge, tremendous benefits from this statement and from this uh, narration from Abu Asim. First of all, Sufyan al-Thawri died in the year 161 after the Hijrah. Secondly, that Sufyan al-Thawri is, is he himself said, Lam yakun as salaf hakada. That the Salaf were not like this. So the term that he used was Salaf, meaning that me, Sufyan al-Thawri, my predecessors, were not like this, and the term that he used was salaf, again indicating and showing that the term salaf was used to refer back to the a'imma who came before them, for the great scholars that came before them. So Sufyan al Thawri, 161 after the Hijra, talking about his salaf. So the term salaf was used to describe the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. He was used in that time. From the benefits of this narration also, is that even if a young man has some knowledge, as he mentioned here, that a young man, 
he came and sat he had some knowledge this shab he said shabun min ahli ilm that this young man or youth from the people of knowledge and he sat in front of those who were older than him and he put himself forward and he spoke and he conveyed that which he possessed of knowledge in front of them even though they were older than him so sufyan reprimanded him showing that even if a young man has some knowledge then upon him is to withhold and not to speak in front of those who have preceded him in knowledge so sufyan became angry with him because he noticed in him that he was putting himself in the forefront even though he was a young boy or he was a young man even the issue wasn't the fact that he had knowledge because that has been born witness to shabun min ahli alilm that he that he was a young man from the people of knowledge the fact that sufyan authority that he reprimanded him for he said that our salaf never used to do what you are doing that you that our salaf they would not speak and they would not put themselves forward up until they had sought knowledge for 30 years and you you sit here and you put yourself forward in front of those who are older than you get up from me and i do not wish to see you in my gathering so the term so so the important point here being my brothers and sisters is the fact that the salaf the term salaf was used by sufyan athawri referring back to his scholars and his predecessors also imam adh-dhahabi and you all know or you should know imam adh-dhahabi rahimahullah imam adh-dhahabi is from the students of sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyah from the 7th and uh, from this from the 8th century of al-islam from the 8th century over 700 years ago from the time that we are living in now that imam adh-dhahabi said in his in his biography of the imam ahmed bin ahmed bin ni'ma al-maqdasi he mentioned about him wa kana ala aqidat as-salaf that this imam ahmed ibn ahmed al-maqdasi that he was upon the aqida of the salaf so who does imam dhahabi intend by the salaf here again sahaba and tabi'in so the term salaf is not a new term it is an age old term barakallahu feekum also ibn kathir rahimahullah and of you, you know ibn kathir of course the great imam of tafsir he has a tafsir of the quran and he is from the students also of ibn taymiyah died in the year 774 after the hijra rahimahullah again over 700 years ago he mentions the statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thumma istawa ala al arsh that then allah ascended over the arsh ascended over the throne from surah al-a'raf ayah number 54 so commenting upon this ayah ibn kathir said so the people so the people in this affair were very the, amongst the people in this affair there were many variant sayings or many great meaning numerous variant sayings with regard to the explanation of this ayah that then Allah ascended over the throne so even kathir is making the point that the people came with various sayings what does this ayah mean and he said here and now is not the place to mention all of those various sayings rather what i wish to say he mentions that indeed the important point here is that in this affair what is to be followed and the path to be followed is the madhhab as-salaf as-salih malik wal awza'i wa thawri wal layth bin sa'ad wa shafi'i wa ahmad bin hanbal wa ishaq bin rahawi wa ghayruhum min a'immati al-muslimin qadiman wa hadithan he mentions in his tafsir tafsir al-quran al-azim so listen to these words of of ibn kathir so after mentioning the ayah and admitting yes there are many different sayings with regard to what does allah what is the what is the meaning of this ayah that allah ascended over the arsh he mentions and the path to be followed is the madhhab of the salafus salih is the way of the salafus salih again the question here being who does ibn kathir intend by the salafus salih so he makes it clear the madhhab of the salafus salih malik meaning malik bin anas died 179 Then he mentions Awza'i died 157 Athawri died 161 
Layth bin Sa'ad. Layth bin Sa'ad from the shiukh of Imam Shafi'i. From Egypt, Layth bin Sa'ad. Then he mentions a Shafi'i. Again, died 204. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, died 241. Ishaq bin Rahawai, died 238. And other than them, from the Imams of the Muslimin, Qadiman wa Haditha. The Imams of the Muslims, from the olden times, Qadiman wa Haditha. And the scholars of today. Meaning, other than them, from those who have passed away, and those who are present now. Intent, again, here being that the term Salaf, who did Ibn Kathir intend? He intended all of those Imams and those who came before them because he said from the Imams of the Muslims, Qadiman, from the olden times and of these times, that this is what is important with regard to the meaning of this ayah. Salaf, what did they intend? Sahaba, those who came after them, those who came after them, including Malik, Afawri, Awza'i, Ahmad, Shafi'i, Layth ibn Sa'ad, from the earliest generations. So as for the usage of the term Salafiyya, that by the way, that's the quote of Ibn Kathir from his Tafsir al-Quran al-Azim, volume 6. As for the term Salafiyya, then the term Salafiyya, then it is an ascription to the Salaf al-Salih. This is what all of these Imams have been talking about. The way of the Salaf. This ayah should be understood by the Salaf. That the Salaf were not like this with regard to Sufyan authority when he spoke to that young man. And that which we mentioned from Imam Al-Awza'i rahimahullah upon you are the statements or the narrations of the Salaf. Even if the people abandon you. Salaf, Salaf, Salaf. What do we intend by the Salaf? The Salaf is an ascription to the Salaf al-Salih, to the righteous predecessors, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Atba'u Tabi'een and those who followed them from the, earlier, from the earliest of generations. And it is a praiseworthy Rather, it is an obligatory affiliation that you have been commanded to, to, to hold on to. And there is no difference between any of us saying Salafiyan nisbatan ila salaf. There is no difference between a person who uses the term Salafiyya. Ascribing himself to the Salaf and between us saying Sunniyan nisbatan there is no difference between a person saying Salafiyan and Sunniyan. A person saying Salafi and Sunni, no difference between the two. Salaf or Salafiya is an ascription to the Sahaba and those who came after them, the righteous predecessors. And Sunni is an ascription to Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a. Who are Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a? Are they not the pious predecessors? Are they not the Sahaba? Are they not the Tabi'een? Are they not the Atba'u Tabi'een? Are they not Ahmed and Malik and Awza'i and Al-Layth bin Sa'ad and, uh, and, and the likes of Hamad ibn Salama and Hamad ibn Zayd and Fudayl ibn Iyad and Al-Shafi'i? Are they not the righteous Salaf? Yes, they are. Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a. Are they not? These names that I've just mentioned, are they not also Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a? Of course they are. So therefore, there is no difference between the ascription to the Salaf of this Ummah and an inscription to Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah because they are Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah and whomsoever follows them are Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the Salaf, they are the Salaf and the Salafi is the one who follows their path and that's why for, for conclusion today Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he said وَلَا عَيْبَ عَلَى مَنْ أَذْهَرَ مَذْهَبَ السَّلَفِ that there is no criticism to be made upon the one who makes manifest his adherence to the madhab of the Salaf. وَانْتَسَبَ إِلَيْهِ And he affiliates himself to it. وَاَتَزَّ إِلَيْهِ And he ascribes himself to it. بَلْ يَجِبُ قَبُولُ ذَلِكْ مِنْهُ بِالْاتِّفَاقِ Rather, that ascription and that affiliation of his to the Salaf, by calling himself Salafi, that is to be accepted from him بالاتفاق, by the consensus, by the Agreement, meaning by agree by the agreement of who? By the agreement of the scholars of Sunnah. For inna madhab al-Salaf la yakuna illa haqqa. For indeed, the madhab of the Salaf that I've mentioned, those Imams and other than them, Sahaba, Tabi'een, Atbaw Tabi'een, the early generations. For indeed, the madhab of the Salaf is not but the haqq, is not except for the truth. Their madhab 
It was the haqq. It was the truth. Is there any dispute, my brothers and sisters, about that? No. They're upon the haqq. If anyone says they were not upon the haqq, the sahaba, the tabi'een, atabaw tabi'een, and these names that I've mentioned other than them, anyone who claims that they were not upon the haqq, then he is upon misguidance and upon bid'ah. And he is a mubtadi' dal, mudil, astray, leading others astray. Because they are upon by textual evidences of the kitab and the sunnah and the ijma, they were upon the haqq. So that's why Shaykh islam said that there is no Christian rather when he calls himself Salafi and he ascribes himself to the Salaf that is to be accepted from him by consensus and agreement. So he's quoting an ijma. Ibn Taymiyyah, as you know, rahimahullah, died in the year 728 after the Hijrah, the great imam of his era. And he said this in Majmu' al-Fatawa, volume 4, page 149. وَجَزَاكُمُ khairan وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمٍ